Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. It is Wednesday, May the 12th. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. I'm Kyle. We got it. I was going to say I'm terrible at golf because that's (laughs) me, but there you go. Hey, well, you've got plenty of practice. (laughs) So hey, you probably all I do. I go out there, practice, get drunk, and uh, come home sad every single time. How many time. Uh, How many holes was it yesterday? Yesterday was 27 holes after the show, and it was 27 brutal holes, <laughs> especially the last, like, 11. I don't think I hit a single drive more than 50 yards, and these all went straight in the air. I don't know what the hell's going on. $530 on a Sim 2 driver for no Ooh. reason whatsoever. Good Lord. I'll tell you what. That's it. Last time, idiot. last time Chris and I went and played golf, we went to a nine-hole course that was out in a cow pasture. So, mm. <laughs> it's played eighteen it. inverted cow pasture. You yep. love it. So, I, de- I desperately time. want to be good. It's all if I had a genie and I had three wishes, that's wish number one. Just can I just play perfect golf for the rest of my life? That would be the happiest person in the world. But no, I suck. I suck. I can get down with you. With it. That's it. We, Chris and I are very much the same. We'll uh, we'll take as many yeah. whacks at it as possible, but uh. You know, yeah. it, it typically, the, it turns out the higher score is not the better score. So, yeah, un- so unfortunately. Is what it is. Go ahead and give you the rundown. If you don't know who that is, that is Kyle Provence. He is uh, the SBR NFL guy, or one of them. He is uh, he is his own man. If you go to DFS Bachelor on YouTube, you can also search him out on Twitter, at DFS Bachelor. For us, if you have not heard of us, if you're watching on Kyle's channel, we are Winning Cures Everything. You can find us winningcureseverything.com or... We're the college football guys from SBR. It is sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. And for Kyle, it is sbrpicks.com slash NFL or slash MLB. Obviously, he does the baseball show as well. So, fellas, you ready to jump into this? Come on. I'm very excited. Oh. This is where this is where Chris gets really mad at me today. We get to talk about his brownies, so get ready for that because he's <laughs> going to get pissed. I love it. I am prepared, and we will start off in the AFC North. We're going to fire in with my Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I've been a fan of the Steelers my entire life. Uh, I didn't really have much of an option. You know, my, when I was really, really little, my dad has always been a fan of the Steelers. His dad was always a fan of the Steelers for whatever reason. We are not from that part of the country. I think it had to do uh, with, you know, the way that they played back in the 60s, 70s, whatever. But, uh, but they don't play like that now, really. So... There's a lot that needs to be fixed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Their needs, yeah. they went 12-4 and four last year. They won the division. They were a little fraudulent. Schedule helped out a little bit. But yeah. went 12-4, and four, went 1-4 and four down the stretch, and then got blown out in the playoff game at home against the Brownies, which was just uh, a complete abomination. But we won't talk about that too much. Uh, their needs <laughs> are, an <laughs> a, they need a center, they need a tight end, they need cornerback, they need running back, they need edge help. And they need a quarterback. Yeah, really, really. And they um, need a quarterback, yeah. I mean, Dwayne <laughs> so, Haskins isn't the future? I don't understand. I'm very confused. I hope, I hope to God Dwayne Haskins is the future. <laughs> <laughs> so here is, here's what they ended up doing. In round one, they got running back Najee Harris out of Alabama. Round two, tight end Pat Fryermuth out of Penn State. Round three, they got a center, Kendrick Green out of Illinois. Uh, so far, first three picks, okay. Like, I, I think there were more things that you could have done uh, rather than take a running back in the first round, obviously, if you followed this show for any amount of time, you know that we are not fans of taking running backs in the first round, especially when you need a lot of offensive line help. Pat Fryermuth, right. that's okay. That's a, a decent value pick. Kendrick Green, the center out of Illinois, super athletic. I think this was a really, really good pick. Uh, offensive tackle Dan Moore Jr. out of Texas A&M in the fourth round. Linebacker Buddy Johnson out of Texas A&M in the fourth round as well, just about 12 picks later. Then you get into round five, and you've got defensive interior lineman Isaiah Loudermilk out of Wisconsin, edge rusher Quincy Roche out of Miami, Florida, safety Trey Norwood out of Oklahoma in the seventh round, and punter Presley Harvin the third out of Georgia Tech. Uh, I love the punter pick uh, because Presley Harvin <laughs> was awesome to watch. Like, he can hit yeah. bombs. So I, I like, you know, it, I'm not a huge fan of – this draft. I don't think that they really hit on all of the things that they needed, but you know, the players that they got, I think are going to be okay. I just, I don't know how, what they did really fixes their issues right now. Uh, Kyle, jump in and tell me, tell me your thoughts here. Yeah. So I'm with you. I like the players. Look, Najee Harris, he looks like Derrick Henry Jr. He's an absolute beast. 
and there's no doubt Pittsburgh needs help in their running game. The problem with the running game last year, though, even though James Conner is about as explosive as a snail and, and they needed to move on from him and there was nothing useful about having him in the backfield whatsoever. I know he's a great story and all that, but he was just sluggish. And trust me, he's been on my, he's been a keeper because I got drafted him really late during the Le'Veon Bell year. So I'm still getting him in my keeper league in like the ninth round. And I just hate that James Conner is on my team. So uh, it's an upgrade. But the problem was not the running backs. Their problem was their offensive line was probably the worst in football. That's why, look, everyone bagged on this offense. Oh, they're doing these two and a half second passes, these quick passes. That's because they had to. They didn't have a choice. Ben had no time to drop back. So really, even though I like the players, to me, their biggest need by far and away wasn't even close was that offensive line. They should have been doing nothing but drafting and trading and drafting and trading for offensive linemen before. I mean, they still have Benny Snell, who they just took, what, in the second, third round yep. last year. Yeah. So going and taking the running back, even though I love the player, I think he's a fantastic player. I love watching him play, and he's certainly going to help. Like, he'll be able to break some tackles when that line's not making any holes, and he'll be able to make something happen. But for me, they just didn't really address the needs they really needed to address. So I'm not a huge fan of this draft, although I do love a few of the players. And I love it when punters are drafted, always. Punters and kickers <laughs> drafted always makes me happy. I don't know why. Uh, it just makes me laugh, and it's just kind of goofy. But, uh, yeah, they, they sort of missed the mark for me. Offensive line would have been where I headed if I was running this team. Do love Najee Harris, though. I really do like the player. Yeah, I'm the same here. I love Najee as well. He's the only Alabama player I've liked in the last decade. Um, but but I, I think he's going to be fun. The problem is, is how fun is he going to be until they can fix this line? That's not their problem. If they had a mobile running quarterback that could help uh, keep the defense a little bit uh, honest. Or, or move the pocket well. or anything. Yeah. But you're talking about you've yeah. got an absolute statue and a terrible offensive line. Those are the two worst things you can give a good explosive running back right there that doesn't help them at all. Any threat of a run would be better than nothing. Um, and, and they just don't have it. And, and so I just didn't understand. I just don't get it. You look at Jacksonville, who's not a very good football team and they take a nobody and turn them into a thousand yard rusher. It, right. I don't, I don't get why you're using this kind of capital on on running backs. It doesn't make sense. I don't like their draft. I don't think they did well. I think this team, which has done unbelievable, they're probably one of the most stable franchises in all the NFL. Listen, at some point in time, the foundation cracks and it all starts falling apart. And, and I think, I think the Steelers are looking at DFL in this division right now going into this year. I really do. I know Tomlin's it's, it's never possible. finished less with a losing record. Well, guess what? He's got an extra game that he gets to lose at the end of the season now, okay? And that schedule is not going to work out as easy as it did last year. So. No, you're, you're 100% right about that. I, the, they did get a lot of value on Quincy Roche out of Miami. Trey Norwood, I love him as a player. Uh, Isaiah Laddermilk out of Wisconsin. Chris, you and I have watched him multiple times. I only two picks were offensive linemen. You know, Kendrick Green, you know, listed as a center. He, he can play guard as well. Like, he, you can move him around some. I just, out of all of these picks that they took, only two offensive linemen. And and there's, that's where it really no gets to. value that you're getting in the fifth and sixth round. The value yeah. in the fifth and sixth round are all just bites at the apple. That is literally just slinging spaghetti up against the wall and hoping it sticks. That's, I, will, yeah. I will guarantee that's, you. That's not value. I will guarantee that's, you that Quincy Roche hope. will play. Like I will guarantee oh, that's, that. Hang on, that, 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 hey, would he would he play in Cleveland? Would he <laughs> would he play in Dallas? Would he play in Minnesota? Like these aren't like unbelievable franchises here, but these are good teams, not terrible teams. He's going to play there because the people in front of him are dog shit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't mean he's good. Yeah. That's, a, that's a valid point. Like I, I think he'll be able to yeah. play behind T.J. Watt and and uh, Alex Highsmith and and those guys. Um, you know, Bud Dupree being gone, like that's obviously. It's something that you got to figure out. Uh, Trey Norwood is going to come in and and shore up, hopefully, that safety spot. But these are seventh round guys, like you know, six seventh round. Uh, who knows? Like, I, I, if you're if you're counting on six and seventh round guys starting for your team, yeah, you've it's got a problem. Major, you've major got, issues. I think, it, I think it's I think it's you've more got yeah. bigger problems. But, exactly. Yeah, it's it's a bit of an issue. It's definitely a bit of an issue. So I uh, yeah. I like the guys. Don't like the draft. Uh, I'll say that yeah. much. Um, yeah. Let's move on. We're going to go right across the way to one of the rivals. Like I feel like this is the most hateful division in in all it of is. the NFL. Like they yeah, they it all really, hate it each really other. Is. 
Uh, yeah, that would they be... all hate each other, except for <laughs> yes. the poor Bengals. Who hates the Bengals? It's like, uh, come on. I, don't, I, I haven't hate hated the Bengals, the Bengals since Boomer to. Esiason in like 91 or something like that. But... That's When when Burfick was playing for him, everybody hated him. But, well, uh, that's true. Yeah, Burfick, that was a yeah. different scenario, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. So the that's ball... true. And it actually turns out he did the right thing, hitting that piece of crap Antonio Brown a few times. He actually deserved <laughs> it. So it was kind of a nice thing that had happened to him. You know, God. Couldn't have happened to a worse guy. So there you go. The Baltimore Ravens went 11-5 and five last year. In Lamar Jackson's <laughs> third season, uh, they needed wide receiver help, edge help, offensive tackle, and safety help. And what they ended up rolling with, uh, I, I, I typically always like Baltimore's drafts, and and I do again this year. Like they always seem yep. to pick the right guy at the right spot. First round wide receiver Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota, and then of course they traded Orlando Brown Jr. to the Chiefs, and were able to pick up. Another first rounder. They get Odafe Owe out of Penn State, edge rusher, guard Ben Cleveland in the third round out of Georgia, cornerback Brandon Stevens out of SMU in the third round. Round four, another wide receiver, Tylen Wallace, who the season before, Man. if you had told me that he was going to go fourth round, I would have said you were That's nuts. Right. I mean, he is an he, absolute this, stud. This is just what happens in this draft because the wide receivers were just so rich. Just so yeah. rich. Then you also have yeah. in fifth in the fifth round a cornerback, Sean Wade, out of Ohio State. He is a guy that was projected first or second round until he played out of position for the entire 2020 season when they moved him to the outside and had him man up on guys. He is he's an inside defensive back. That's what yeah. he's always been. Right. So, uh, right. But you get him in the fifth round now. You get edge rusher Dalen Hayes out of Notre Dame, and then you get tight end Ben Mason out of Michigan. Uh, all three of those last ones in the fifth round. I freaking love this draft. Like, the Baltimore, every year, it feels like they are the smartest team on the block when it comes to the draft and how to get value for those picks. And they, they hit this one out of the park, I think. Yeah, I thought they did a really good job. Now, the one concern is who's going to replace Orlando Brown. I, I'm not exactly sure there. The good news for them is, I mean, what is it going to be? Uh, did, didn't they draft a kid, Tyree Phillips or something like that? Maybe it's him. So they, they, they missed that. You have two first-round picks late in the first round. Get yourself a tackle. Get yourself somebody. Now, the good news is you have Lamar Jackson, who even if you aren't blocking, he's going to outrun every single player on the defense. So they probably feel like, you know, uh, we, we have a little bit of leeway here. I feel bad for the wide receivers. I think they're great players. I like who they picked. I feel bad for them because Lamar Jackson's not going to be throwing them the ball properly. So they're going to have really low numbers. You know, you're probably going to see 35 or 40 catches out of these guys and, you know, 412 yards and three touchdowns. And they probably their second contract's not going to look beautiful because they have a guy who's electric, fun to watch, uh, love everything about Lamar Jackson except for the fact that he cannot throw a pass. He can't. <laughs> He does no touch or finesse on the ball whatsoever. Um, it's just hard to watch. I mean, you, you saw it with them last year. You, you have a guy like Brady. When they're blitzing the crap and taking those run lanes away from Lamar Jackson, he can't adjust and read on the opposite side of the field and put the ball where it needs to go. That's just not the type of player he is. So even though I love these wide receivers, everything I see about Bateman makes me think he's an absolute stud. Tylen Wallace as well. I just wonder how utilized are they actually going to be because, uh, again, we're talking about a run first, run second, run third offense, and maybe you get the occasional pass to Mark Andrews. Uh, I like the Ben Cleveland pick. They obviously needed to bolster that line. Of course, we know what they do with linebackers, so always probably going to have this massive career because that's what Baltimore does. They turn them into studs. Overall, good players. I like the draft. Wish they would have addressed that offensive tackle situation. It will be interesting to see there. And overall, I just feel bad for the wide receivers. That's how I came out feeling uh, from this draft. <laughs> I can't, I can't, we just can't disagree even more. Like, I, I love Lamar. I think Lamar can throw. Uh, name a receiver that's been worth a shit in that offense that's come over that's there. Fair. Hollywood Brown has been a bust. He's just not great. I don't well, think he's, he's a number one guy. Quality talent. Like, I, I, what? Think, I, I don't think he's a number one guy. I think I think he can well, okay. be useful. But, uh, they, hang but, on. If you're not a number one guy, you can't be a first-round draft pick wide receiver if you're not a number one guy. If you're going to be Julian Edelman, Julian Edelman's coming the sixth and seventh round, okay, Gary? Uh, Not a, in okay. the first. That's, right? a, that's a good right. point. So, that's a good point. So that's called bust. That that's called bust. All right. Uh, I I like Rashad Bateman. My problem is, and this isn't a problem. I just assume they like Bateman because of Bateman's size. Because I think yeah. there are two receivers that really three receivers that went behind him. Now they're all considerably smaller than him. Um, in in Elijah Moore, uh, Rondell Moore, and then Terrace Marshall. I like all better than than Bateman. 
But if they want a big receiver and not another small, fast guy like Hollywood, then it makes sense. And I think Lamar is going to look much better if Bateman can get open. All right. Yeah. So is Lamar the kind of guy that can throw the football through a keyhole? No, but he's not awful. His accuracy is not nearly as bad as people make it out to be. His receivers aren't getting open. Hell, they gave receiving snaps and passes to Des Bryant Des last Bryant. year. Yeah. Are we are we kidding ourselves to think this receiving core is worth a shit at all? They're not right. good. That is not on Lamar. The reason he dumps the ball off to his tight end is because that's the only guy that can catch the football. If Bateman's good. I think we're going to be fine. I think this offense is going to open up and we're going to see a different side of it. You can't make chicken salad with chicken shit. All right. He <laughs> runs the football because he has no one to throw the ball to. Well, he's got Sammy Watkins now. He's He's got Hollywood well, Sammy Brown. Sammy Watkins hasn't he's, been good since the day he stepped on the field. Miles since Tommy Boykin was the first qu- receiver taken in that draft. That's the first time I ever said, bust. <laughs> bust, they made a mistake. Absolutely but, made yes. a mistake in that it's, draft. By the way, what you were talking about with Lamar uh, not being able to throw it through a keyhole, neither can Josh Allen. But it no, all changes but it when you got somebody like because Stephon he got Diggs. Guys that can get open. Yeah. yeah and, got, I, and this yeah. is the reason that I would have liked a guy like Elijah Moore. I saw Elijah Moore track, do exactly what uh, uh, Stefan Diggs does. He tracks deep balls better than any receiver in the league uh, uh, Diggs does. Elijah Moore does the exact same thing. Throw the ball deep. And he will go and get it. He will try. You don't have to throw it to him. He will find the football. He will track it down. He will catch it. This is what I liked about him. I do think they're a little gun shy and they want some size at the wide receiver position. That makes sense um, because they've got a first round pick in in Hollywood and invested and it hasn't panned out. Um, I hope Bateman's good. I would like this offense to be fun because I like Lamar. I'm, I'm emotionally invested yeah. in Lamar. I think he's far better than people give him credit for. The best quarterback in the world, Tom Brady, last year had unbelievable numbers. Two years ago, his last year in 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 in, in New England, his numbers were terrible. Look at his True. receiving core at one place. Look at him in another. If yeah. you put Lamar on one of these better teams with a good receiver, I'm not asking for four or five, one good receiver. It totally changes everything. I, I do right. agree with that. By the way, Kyle, the, uh, the tackle position uh, it shored up a little bit by Alejandro Villanueva signing there. Yeah, they, oh, they okay. did right. sign him from the Steelers. Yep. Uh, yeah. uh, he's he's not he's not uh, Orlando by any Orlando. means. No, no, not even close. So but everyone also, loves Andrew. On, he's going to be in plenty of commercials, and everyone loves oh, him, yes. and the fans will love him. So that's always a nice thing to add to your team, I suppose. It right. it most certainly is. And with that, we will head over to Chris's team. And that would be the Cleveland Browns. And, uh, you know, went 11-5 last year. Really successful season, I do believe. I, I think it's safe to say that. Uh, what, maybe best year in, I mean, a decade at least? Franchise what, history no, since no, 1965. No, no. <laughs> oh, it, it's, the, it's the best year since John Elway's drive. That's yeah, 86. Crazy. Since, since the 86 team. So we're course. talking three days. Ernest Piner. We're talking a long, yeah. long time. Uh, yeah. they, they needed some help, but for the most part, it's a pretty good roster already. Like they they've got a, yeah. they got a bunch of good dudes. Uh, this front yeah. office knows what they're doing. Uh, the needs you could say that they might need was edge help, uh, linebacker help, wide receiver, and defensive tackle. Um, Here is what they ended up doing: you got cornerback Greg Newsom out of Northwestern, who is an absolute stud in the first round. Linebacker mm-hmm. Jeremiah Awasu oh. Koromoa out of Notre Dame oh. in the second round. He steel. dropped. Be still, my heart. Yeah. Oh. What a steal. What a steal. Uh, <laughs> round three, Anthony Schwartz out of Auburn, who can absolutely fly. He's a uh, track guy. Planet. Yep. Uh, offensive tackle James Hudson out of Cincinnati. I think that was a fantastic pick in the fourth round. Tommy Togei uh, out of Ohio State in the fourth round. Tony Fields, linebacker slash safety out of West Virginia, who is awesome. Uh, he is the the perfect meld to go against like some of these spread offenses now. Uh, safety Richard LeCount out of Georgia in the fifth round, who... I, I think that was an absolute steal as well. And then Demetric Felton running back out of UCLA in the late sixth, uh, pick 211. Uh, they, I mean, it, it, this was absolutely, uh, you know, we're, we're not giving letter grades, but this was an A-plus to me. This They yeah. hit everything that they needed to hit. They brought in fantastic players. They, I mean, everything about this was good. Yeah, I agree. And it's going to be contrary to what I said, because Chris is not going to hate this, because this was definitely the best draft in this division. They absolutely needed another corner outside of Greedy Williams over there. And you saw the team struggle when they had injuries in that secondary last year. You, they couldn't stop the pass. And that's their biggest 
two problems are they play in a cold weather city and their quarterback cannot play in cold weather. I look, ba- I love Baker Mayfield's personality. I love the commercials. I love all that. But the dude comes up small in cold weather games. It was a guaranteed under every single time. The, the, and if you remember, poor Cleveland, they had what four straight weeks where they were playing in a damn tsunami. Either in last snow year. or a tsunami, four weeks in a row. Yes, it was it was unbearable to watch. Oh, it's so it, hard. It really was. And look, that's going to happen sometimes. But, you know, you look at the great ones. You look at the Aaron Rodgers and the Brady's. They can get it done in those situations. And he just really struggles with it. I mean, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He struggles against it. But the rest of that roster is absolutely loaded. The best one-two running back combo in the league, a terrific offensive line. Of course, the best pass rusher in the NFL in Miles Garrett. Love that they added Greg Newsom in the first round. I think that's a huge upgrade to their secondary. Oh, sorry, I'm don't know why there's noise playing through my headphones here. <laughs> well, we can't hear it. But, uh, yeah, you're all good. <laughs> okay, good. You guys can't hear it. Fantastic. Because all of a sudden it just started going wild on me here. I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, the Owosu Oromo, and I know I'm butchering that name, but that's yeah, Owosu, okay. Owosu, Owosu Komor. Yeah, J-O-K. J-O-K. Okay. I, I thought he was the best <laughs> linebacker in the draft. I thought in the he draft. Was, and the, in the draft. I thought he was better than Micah Parsons. And then, you know, day two started, and I saw he was still there. I thought he would be the first player off the board to Jacksonville in the second round, and he wasn't, and he goes all the way to Cleveland. Cleveland absolutely knocked it out of the park here. Terrific draft. Uh, They just need themselves a cold-weather quarterback. That's it. So I think they're going to be fine at quarterback. I'm not – and listen, I don't blow Baker, okay? All right, I don't don't blow smoke. I I have – I have criticized him appropriately, I believe, all right? I don't live in this fictitious world where I think he's the end-all, be-all. I do think he progressed last year and got substantially better. His first offensive coach was Hugh Jackson. His second offensive coach was Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens. His third is Kevin Stefanski. The The gap, the, the, the tool to measure – the separation between Stefanski and Freddie Kitchens has not been created. Okay. It <laughs> don't have a way to quantify how to separate these two. There's not a lingo that has been, there's not words in the English language made to, 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 to discriminate those two. All right. And so by the end of last year, you got to take all those. It, that's not just cold weather. When you're playing in a monsoon, and you're playing in a blizzard, you, like, like playing in cold, frigid weather, but not a blizzard is different than playing in a blizzard. Okay. Yeah. And those games so, were, they were, and, and it was four in a row. At some point yeah. in time, you just throw your hands up and say, we're going out here and we just don't want to get hurt because we think we're going to make yeah. the playoffs no matter what. Um, so I'm not going to hold those things against him. I do believe that he progressively got better. Remember, he also lost his best offensive receiver, of course, like early in the season. Week one, week two, and they're getting Odell back. I, I think this is going to change things. I think this offense is going to be unbelievable. I think Baker's going to be fine. Get to the draft. This is why the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did so well. I think the Cleveland Browns, with the picks they had, did better than every team in the draft. This is not a homer pick. I truly honestly believe that. And it's because they went into the draft with no great need. They didn't have to say, we have to fill a hole here. They were really, truly able to say, this is the best person on the board. Why would we not take them and make our team better? This is the best guy on the board. Why would we not take them and make our team better? And they did it over and over and over again. And I just think this team's really good. So I've talked about Miles Garrett is a fraction of a second away from having 30 sacks last year. I'm talking just an obscene number. All right. If the secondary can just cover guys, I don't need the secondary to make interceptions. I don't need them to 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 knock balls down. I don't need them to do anything other than make the quarterback hold the football just a fraction of a second longer than they are now. And Miles Garrett is going to eat them. I agree. <laughs> That's it. Eat them alive, dead. Yeah, and it's true. Like the secondary was just hurt last year. That was the big problem. Yes, I mean, Denzel yeah. Ward and Greedy Williams are terrific corner. Of course, they got rid of a couple of safeties, and we don't know what them. Greedy's going to be yet because he never right. really played the whole year. But right. Denzel when Ward he does, he's very effective. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Yeah. When Greedy Williams plays, he's a fade for me. When I have a receiver over Greedy Williams, he gave up something like point one six fantasy points per route ran against. 
uh, it was tough to, but just once those injuries piled up, that secondary was so, so bad. You, you I mean, add Newsom, and Newsom's had some injury issues, but you add Newsom into the mix to where now you can just rotate guys. The thing I like about this is, is you stay healthy because you don't have to play all the snaps all the time now. Right. Is now right. instead of playing every defensive snap, you're going to play 60% or 70% of the defensive snaps. And those 30% you're not playing helps you not get hurt helps rest your body, helps save your body. I, I love what they're doing in Cleveland on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I, I, I want to attack your, your Jadavion Clowney pick just one time. Everybody who's listened mm-hmm. to Winning Cures Everything knows this. They've heard me say this before. You don't know how to watch football, and you don't know how to watch defensive line, guys. Everyone just works under the impression that if you're not getting sacks as, a, as an edge rusher or a defensive edge guy, then you're worthless. But no, sure. he is one of the best run-stopping defensive linemen in all of football. When he was in college, he didn't get a lot of sacks. That famous hit he had was on a running back not a yep. quarterback, okay? This guy attacks running backs. He stops the run. Cleveland last year got ran on like their defense was Swiss damn cheese, okay? Yep. He yep. is going to plug the hole and stop the run. That's what we need him to do, by the way. We don't need him getting 12 sacks. I don't need him getting one sack. I got a monster on the other side to do that. You know, we just need him to play 12 games, maybe. That's it. I, I mean, do need him to play available. 12 games. I that, do need that's him to the do real that. knock on him. The guy holds out, acts like he's God's gift, and he's the savior, yeah. and then the dude can't play more than four games. Like, come on, get real here, man. Get on but the But I think field a lot of media people give him crap because they don't. They just look at sack numbers for his mm-hmm. position, and they think that's the only way to grade those guys. Man, some of the, the reason he's getting, he's super valuable to teams is, is – he helped stop the run for the Titans last year. And, and he's actually pretty good in coverage. Runs. You can you, you can zone blitz with him and drop him back. Yeah, he's crazy enough athletic. To make plays he's and, super and fast. To make plays in the passing game as well. So he's there, there are some. He's big and he's fast. Uh, no, he, he yeah. has value. He's just not a pass rusher. Those are two different yeah. skills. I like sure. having a guy Agreed. that can stop the run. I tend like to uh, I tend to agree with you. I think that uh, I think they killed it. I mean, I think they absolutely mm-hmm. killed it. So we'll uh, we'll move on from there, and we will jump into. The Cincinnati Bengals, who is uh, another one of Chris's teams, if only for the fact that his boy Joe Burrow is the quarterback there. Um, and this is the Bayou. This is the new Bayou Bengals, baby. It, it kind of seems like it, doesn't it? <laughs> kind of seems like it. it. They um, uh, they were four eleven and one last year, and they were in some super tight games. Defense couldn't stop anybody. Burrow, you know, had to had to create some playmakers and whatnot. But, they, I mean, they quickly got the offense going. You know, T. Higgins showed up. They they figured some things out on that offense, and I think it's just a, another step in the right direction. Hopefully he comes back, you know, fully healthy. All reports are he's perfectly fine, but we shall see. They needed tackle. Yeah. They needed wide receiver. They needed guard. They needed tight end. They needed defensive tackle. So, basically, yeah. line help. They needed a Everything bunch of lines. across the front six. Yes. Yes, on, on offense and defense, really. Um, yeah. And so, with that, they went into this draft, and at pick number five, they took wide receiver Jamar Chase, who Chris and I have talked about this before. If this is your first time watching us, 32% of Burrow's sacks last year were covered sacks. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. they, he had wide receivers that could not get open. Chase is a wide receiver that can get open. I think that's going to help out a few things. He'll be able to get the ball out a little bit quicker. In round two, they did address that tackle situation. They got Jackson Carmen out of Clemson. Round three, Joseph Fasai out of Texas, edge rusher. In round four, another edge rusher, Cameron Sample out of Tulane. Defensive interior lineman, Tyler Shelvin in the fourth round out of LSU. He is a one of those old school kind of nose tackle, uh, big just big man, body. Takes can stop up the a run. lot of space. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they got tackled Deontay Smith out of East Carolina in the fourth round. Then we move to the fifth round. They draft a kicker, Evan McPherson <laughs> out of Florida, which I'm not that upset about. Uh his his coach was actually a former Bengal who still has ties to the organization. Evan McPherson could bomb him. Like he's he's a fantastic kicker. So yeah, I, you know maybe a little early for me, but eh, whatever. And then yeah. once you get into round six and seven, this is where you take flyers on guys. Center Trey Hill out of Georgia, running back Chris Evans out of uh, Michigan, and edge rusher Wyatt Hubert out of Kansas State. Uh, again, I, you know I don't have a lot of faith in the Bengals front office, but. This was not a bad draft for what they they needed to accomplish. They they hit some needs and they got some value with some of these guys. I I like what yeah. they did. 
Yeah, I do too. And look, there's no secret. They were dropping Joe Burrow back 55 times a game last year, which is absolutely crazy to do to a young rookie quarterback, and that's why he got his leg knocked off. Yes. So at five, it was, the real debate was, are they going to take Panay Sewell here, which would have made total sense, or take Jamar Chase to replace the corpse of A.J. Green, whom they, gratefully for all Bengals fans, shipped off to Arizona. I love this draft. I think they nailed it on the head. They took the best player available. You take a Jamar Chase, especially a guy with such a rapport with your young quarterback. I absolutely love what they did there. And then they instantly get back in the second round, third round, fourth round, and start addressing those needs. I mean, their next one, two, three, four, five picks were offensive or defensive linemen, which is exactly what they needed to do. So I really think the Bengals are probably the second. This is a pretty good division for draft outside of the Steelers. Uh, I, the Bengals, for me, were right up there with Cleveland. I love what both teams did. Uh, good on the Bengals. They're going to be a little bit better this year. And I just, I too like Joe Burrow quite a bit. I, you know, I'm not the biggest SEC fan, or I don't really care all <laughs> that much about college football. It's too much for me. I don't know how the hell but you guys. He's, do he's a fun guy, though. He's a but fun he's a fun dude. guy. He's a talented guy. He's going Super to be likeable. very. Yeah, he is. He really is likable. He can do everything. He can run. He can throw. Uh, I like everything about this draft. I think the Bengals knocked it out of the park. Yeah, I did too. For an organization that's just kind of known for cocking it up, they they didn't mm-hmm. do that. And mm-hmm. uh, and, and Gary gave the stat that that, that I would have going to give is is thirty two percent of the sacks were coverage sacks. Listen, we saw Houston last year have the worst offensive line in football. They 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 also had the best single offensive lineman in football. Isn't that weird? Like it is weird. Like one off it, Penny Sewell wasn't going to fix this offensive line. He was not right. going to make up or account for 30% of Joe's sacks. All right. But one weapon like Jamar Chase could absolutely help affect a larger percentage of the sacks than, than one offensive lineman. So yeah. I, I like taking the, just the, the generational player. Yeah. And yeah. I also think that offensive, uh, that wide receiver room, that wide receiver room right now is probably one of the best wide receiver rooms, it especially is. at the age that all those guys are in, in Boyd and Higgins. Chase. <coughs> Ow, man. I mean, you're talking, if those guys can stay healthy, they could play together another six years all in their prime and, and mm-hmm. be kind of elite. That's, that's, that's pretty scary. And then you're right. They address the offensive line outside of this. Gary and I've talked about it before. Their line was so bad because they were banged up. Now the guys that they were missing aren't great. They're not pro bowlers, but the guys coming back just to be healthy next year are going to be upgrades from what actually played last year. So sure. I'm not crazy concerned about the line. It's something you want to address, I still think they're going to throw it 55 times a game, by the way. I don't think they're stopping that. I think that's the way football is going in the NFL, man. I mean, it just really – I never in my life thought I'd see a day where these Steelers would, like, have a game that they won and they would have less than 50 yards rushing. And they had, like, three games back-to-back-to-back last year where they were, like, less than 30 yards. It was, like, 29, 28, 20 – like – this is just the way modern football is played today, man. It just right. is. And Jonah Buffalo Williams is coming very back. similar in that route too. Buffalo, yeah, yeah. Buffalo. I never thought they would not run the football. Yeah, yeah, um, they don't run it at, at all. At the all, line, at all. the line for the uh, the Bengals. Jonah Williams coming back is going to be big. They signed Riley Reef to play that right tackle position uh, out of Minnesota. And say what you want about him in Minnesota, like he wasn't great, but maybe a change of scenery. Uh, uh, position change. I think he played a little guard at Minnesota, uh, but he's versatile. Like he can just move all yeah. over the place. Uh, Trey Hopkins, you know, uh, a year under his belt, looks like things may be improving for him. Um, you know, uh, we'll we'll see. I I do the, the guy in front of Reef that Reef's taking his place. That guy was that guy was just a a, a soup can. Okay, he was a nobody. <laughs> all right, I don't need him to be a Pro Bowl. I just need him yeah. to stand in front of dudes. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, I like, will say I, this. They're going to miss William Jackson. They are going to miss yeah. William Jackson. Probably the most underrated corner in the entire league was a great signing by Washington. William Jackson was an absolute shutdown machine on a terrible defense. They didn't throw towards William Jackson. 0. 0.09 fantasy points per route ran against last year. One of the best corners in the entire league. They're going to miss him. So that could be one thing to worry about. The teams are going to be able to throw the ball a little bit on this team. I mean, you're not going to be able to fix how bad this defense was with one draft. That's just not going nope. to happen. And But they're going to miss William Jackson for sure. Oh, for sure. 
for sure. Uh, however, that could be part of the reason why Chris believes that they're going to be throwing the ball 55 times a ball game, times game to, uh, to yeah. chase Auden Tate, uh, uh, Stanley Morgan, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, like all those guys. They uh, they got they got some dudes that are going to be getting the ball too. So uh, we will move away from the AFC North, and we are going to start talking about the NFC North, and we'll start off with the Green Bay Packers. Good old Aaron Rodgers, always in the news, always something going on. Last year, of course, it was the draft that got Jordan Love. And this year, uh, it was draft day. Of course, Adam Schefter decides to drop his bomb and and whatnot, which uh, get get a little opinion here. What did y'all think about the fact that uh, all of that was just news that accumulated and he just decided to drop it that day? I think he was told by Aaron Rodgers, I want you to release this the morning of the draft. I don't think it came from Aaron Rodgers. I, I, well, okay. I bet it came from Aaron Rodgers' people. Yeah, I had to. Have. I think it just stewed up and you stewed up. You embarrassed me on draft Jeopardy. day last year. I'm embarrassing yeah. you. Yeah, and, you know, we're getting into this right now with this. This is like, you know, you ever tell your kid, hey, when I get when I come back in here, this room better be clean, and they just go complete F you and rip everything off the yep. walls, and it's an absolute mess? <laughs> That's what the Packers did in the first round here. So the news comes out. Look, I'm pissed. You never draft me wide receivers. Instead, you trade up and draft a quarterback in the first round last year. So I'm telling everyone, there's no way the Packers aren't taking Elijah Moore right now with this pick. There's no way they have the balls to not help Aaron Rodgers in the first round. They're like, you know what? We're ripping the sheets off the bed. We're ripping the paintings off the wall. We're taking Eric Stokes out of Georgia. And they already have a solid secondary. The, the, the <laughs> Defending the pass was not the Packers' problem. They can't stop the run. They can't they stop the run. They, 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 can't took stop a, they took a quarterback. They took a corner, and not even the best one available at the time. Oh, I don't uh, understand. No, it was a the ridiculous reach. They so they so the just, Packers. By the way, to get through the the whole spiel, they yeah, were thirteen sorry. and three last. No, you're good. Thirteen and three last year. Uh, they needed offensive tackle. They needed wide receiver, linebacker, defensive tackle, and then cornerback maybe. But at twenty nine, they take Stokes, and it is a. <sighs> Massive reach. I mean, you you have this was a mid second round guy that you that you took towards the end of the first round. For no, I mean he's he's speedy. Like it, you're not going to get beat over the top with him. But I don't think that you can reasonably justify this at all. It makes no, no. sense whatsoever. So round two, it, things it, a little better. Josh Myers, center out of Ohio State, wide receiver Amari Rogers out of Clemson in the third round, tackle Royce Newman out of Ole Miss in the fourth. Fifth round, they go uh, interior defensive lineman Tedderell Slayton out of uh, Florida. He was a decent pick, I guess. Uh, but all of these are basically flyers in the fifth, sixth, and seventh round. Quarterback Shamar Jean Charles out of App State. Tackle Cole Van Lannan out of Wisconsin. Linebacker Isaiah McDuffie out of Boston College. And then running back Kylan Hill out of Mississippi State. A uh, lot of stuff that they didn't particularly need, I don't guess. Like linebacker, yes. Tackle... Uh, Cole Van Lannan, like uh, you want to take an offensive lineman, Notre Dame and Wisconsin, those would be the spots to get them from. Uh, I just, you know, you took two quarterbacks in this draft. Why? I mean, uh, <laughs> okay. So first of all, the Packers have been frauds for the last two years. They didn't belong in the NFC Championship game in either game, and they actually came close to beating Tampa Bay if it wasn't for that missed pass interference call on the Sean Murphy bunting interception. Yep. You might be talking about. Green Bay in the Super Bowl, but this team's a fraud and they can't stop the run. They only have one weapon they can give the ball to and Devontae Adams. I don't care what people say about Aaron Jones. He's also a fraud. Sometimes he's effective in the passing game. This team, I know we weren't giving out grades. This team gets a big fat F. They failed. They failed. They failed across the board. And I love the little, hey, Amari Rogers looks like he might be a fine player, but was this a little stab as well? Like, hey, if you're going to be gone, we'll still have an A. Rodgers on this team. We'll have an A. Rod and we'll go with this young kid. I don't know what the hell this front office is thinking. It's outside of the Texans. This is the worst front office in the entire National Football League. They have been for a long time. I think the only really good move they ever made was drafting Rodgers late and signing Reggie White to like the first ever free agent deal. Other than that, this team is – their front office is complete garbage. I don't blame Aaron Rodgers for wanting to get the hell out of here. This is not a 13-3 and three team. This is just a team that played in a terrible division against weak opponents and no defenses and no quarterbacks. I just I hate what the Packers did. This is my least favorite organization. They've had the dumbest head coaches in the league since I can remember. Mike McCarthy, I know, I know that uh, Chris says Freddie Kitchens is the worst head coach. Mike McCarthy is the dumbest head coach who has ever 
ever graced the sideline. The guy is an absolute moron top to bottom. Sorry, Cowboys fans. And Matt LaFleur, I always think dodgeball, cram it in your cram hole, LaFleur, because he's also a dumbass. If I see Jamal Williams get 15 carries again, I might blow my own damn brains out. I can't stand the crap that this team does. I thought they failed this draft. Absolute fail. For me, even they, though they had, what, three times more picks than the Seahawks, I think this is the worst draft in the entire league. Wow. I, I didn't think they did very good. They're up there as one of the worst for me as well. I don't like this draft. I don't understand it. Um, I, I'm with you on, on these guys. Some of these guys might end up being pretty good players. I have no idea. Uh, it, it's just a matter of this this relationship. So you, you, the analogy I got is, is this is a divorce, okay? And, and – I guess parent A will use for politically correct reasons bought and has like a nice sweet ass old Corvette. All right. Worth some money. Parent B gets the Corvette in the, in the divorce. Parent A says, screw that. I'm just setting the son of a bitch on fire. Like, like Mm -hmm. I'd rather, I'd rather run it over with a cement truck than let you have it. So I'm just going to burn this thing to the ground. I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't really know what's going on. This is why, by the way, some teams have terrible owners, all right? Some teams just have god-awful owners that won't get out of the way. But at least you have somebody who's responsible, who you can stand up and point to and say, that guy's fucking it up, okay? Mm -hmm. Or that guy's fixing it. We got a problem. You can storm the Capitol and you can say, listen, well, I shouldn't use the word storm the Capitol, but like you you (laughs) you could make a statement to an individual and say, I'm not happy as a fan base, and we need change. We need you to do something different. And with Green Bay, you can't really do that. Like, there's not one owner. There's not one guy. It's the only one that you can point to is uh, Gunta. They have a CEO. And yeah, that's that's it. That's all you can do. Yep. And I I don't. I'll tell you this. The reason why I don't like it, and as I've said in some of these other videos, is I will like your draft if I can understand the strategy behind it. Right, if go. I can see, yes. it, and I don't even have to like the strategy. They, they I just have to see the pair. strategy. The, their only strategy should have been kissing Aaron Rodgers' ass so he doesn't leave that organization, and they couldn't even get that right. Well, hang on, it was hang laid on. out in plain so black and white. Let's say you know Rodgers is gone. Let's say you believe him leaving, and you know this relationship is broken. If this is your plan for the team for life after Rodgers, this is not setting Jordan Love up for success either, my friend. No. Like, no, it's not. That, like, I'm not even saying there's a world in which they know this relationship cannot be fixed. This is a man that doesn't talk to his mother, all right? Do you think exactly. that he's going to forgive you? Like, <laughs> exactly. just, some, just some random and listen, guy I'll, that's a I'll, GM? I'll go, out of the, uh, I'll go out of the parent A and parent. I'm a divorced man, and let me just tell you what. Aaron Rodgers is the wife, and he's taking half their shit. That's exactly what's oh, happening. I think he's taking more than half, baby. He's yeah. getting alimony on top of child support. My ex-wife even <laughs> took my crock pot, and I love that yeah. damn thing. So I know exactly what's happening here. Uh, parent A and Parent B is pr- pretty damn clear what's happening here, and he's yeah. setting it on fire. And I don't blame him. Packers, yeah. god awful. Oh, it's, this, this is, yeah. I don't. I'm, I'm with Gary. Even if I disagree with your strategy, but I at least see what you're trying to do, yeah. I can forgive it because I might be wrong. We have different strategies, and, and I'm not a GM. Yeah. You are, and so good luck to you. I don't even know what their strategy is. That's Apparently, a, yeah, it's it, Jordan it, Love to Marquez Valdez Scantling for seven drops a game. I don't, <laughs> I don't believe it. No, I mean, what a just a dreadful receiving core, dreadful so, team. So let me ask you this: So you do a lot of props and you do a lot of this stuff. Do you just blindly take all the Packers unders this year with hopes that even if Rogers plays, he's just pissed off? He's just screw it. I don't give a shit anymore. Yeah, yeah, and Aaron Rodgers is that kind of guy. You ju- you just I mean, talked think, about it. I he, think there's a world in which some people say, "Oh, I want him pissed off because then he'll go out and wreck the league." Yeah, that that's what he did year. last year. Yeah, or he could that's just empty la- the bank account on his way out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, this, this year he's got Jeopardy, and he loves that hosting the Jeopardy. I'm telling you right now, it will not shock me. He's like, you know what? Fuck you guys. I'm gonna host Jeopardy for a year. I don't I'm know Carson. that he's I'm- gonna be the host of Jeopardy. <laughs> he should be. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love you it. You love Same it, here. but I don't know that the people who actually pay the bills at Jeopardy love it. Yeah, we'll, yeah, there we'll you see. go. <laughs> Who knows? I, did y'all see he's going to be on like the uh, the Connors or whatever this week, like the uh, oh the Roseanne God. spinoff thing, whatever. Like, but he's <laughs> he's on it as the host of Jeopardy. 
Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's I'm really telling weird. you, he loves oh, the Jeopardy thing. That's like, that show's like based out of Chicago. And so I wonder yeah. how they're going to like fit that in because they're supposed oh, yeah. to hate him because they're big Bears fans. Yep. We shall God see. Is, we shall see. All right. Speaking of the Bears, let's go ahead and discuss it. Um, I, I think, you know, I, I'll go ahead and tell you, I think I'm a fan. You know, they went eight and eight last year. Uh, they finally said adios to Trubisky. He is donezo, gone. They needed quarterback. They needed cornerback. They needed ta- uh, tackle, wide receiver, defensive tackle. And, uh, and you know, I, I think I think what they ended up doing, I'm okay with. They they trade mm-hmm. up, and they go ahead and go get their guy in Justin Fields. They they made sure. Like, I, we were all a little shocked at, at the fact that Justin Fields was dropping, but I could understand it. Right, and Chris, you and I talked on the show about this. We talked with the uh, the, uh, the the Westlap Pirates guys about this, and Fields holds on to the ball for a long time. It takes him a while to process uh, the field as it's going, and it leads to more sacks. It leads to like that, but it's it's something that you can get past. This is the same kind of thing as like a Ryan Tannehill situation, but he's way more athletic than Ryan Tannehill. So I, I think that you can work with him in your offense. He could even be the starter in Week One. And I think they would be just fine. I think they would be improved over what they were last year. So you go up, you get Justin Fields at number one. You get tackled Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. That was an incredible value pick yeah, uh, in that round was a two. Huge pick. But then yeah. they they had to trade rounds three and four and whatnot. They get those out of the way, and then the rest are basically just flyers between five, six, and seven. They got Larry mm-hmm. Borum, offensive tackle out of Missouri. They got Khalil Herbert out of Virginia Tech, which I loved, absolute love. He is a He's a lightning bolt. Um, Daz Newsom, wide receiver out of North Carolina. Again, lightning bolt, it, extreme playmaker. Uh, Thomas Graham. He's talking about just stupid athletes those yes. last two picks. Oh, yes. Cornerback, galore. Yes, cornerback Thomas Graham Jr. out of Oregon in the sixth round. And with pick number 250, uh, Kiaris Tonga out of BYU, Ooh, interior nice defensive job. lineman. He is uh, – all of these were, were good. Like, I, I, I love mm-hmm. all of this. Thomas Graham opted love- out last season, but he – he should have been a, a round two or three guy. He should have been a day two guy, and he dropped all the way to the sixth round. Uh, they they got some value with these picks. Yeah, I love with the bear. You could have stopped right there at one pick. They could have traded their whole draft for one pick, taken Justin Fields, and the Bears won the first round. Plain and simple. Listen, you cannot go into the season with Andy fucking Dalton as your quarterback. Andy Dalton is absolute trash on the field, especially in a primetime game. You do not want to go watch the Bears play on Monday Night Football as a Bears fan with Andy Dalton as your quarterback. You're going to get beaten 40 to 3. He's going to throw four interceptions. Justin Fields absolutely 100% has to start game one. Matt Nagy knows it. Ryan Pace knows it. Their jobs are on the line. And for once, this front office did something good. And I agree. I love the Tevin Jenkins pick in round two. I thought the Bears absolutely killed it getting Justin Fields. I was really proud of them. I was happy for Bears fans. Uh, great job by the Bears. You could not, and they were even taunting their fans. I'm like, this is a dangerous game you guys are playing, t- tweeting out Andy Dalton. I don't know what the hell you guys are doing, but everyone knows the red rifle is more like the red water pistol. He's cost me so much money. If Andy Dalton <laughs> was on the side of the road in the snow, broken down, and he had three little kids wrapped up in aluminum blankets, I swear to you on my life, I would spray snow on them and drive right past and enjoy every single second of it. Can't stand Andy Dalton. Great job by the Bears getting Justin Fields. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, this is a little bit of a mixed bag for me. Like, this is a weird thing. You're talking about an organization that I really like and I have my entire life. But you're talking about a front office and a man in Ryan Pace that I loathe. And I, well, it's not that I hate yeah. him. I think he has been awful at his job. And to mm-hmm. allow him to give away the picks that they had to give and do all the things that they had to do to get fields – and now we're sure. going to claim him the conquering hero? No, 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 no. No, he still mm-hmm. needs to be hurled into the river, all right? <laughs> I, I just can't handle it. I can't have Ryan Pace marching down the streets of Chicago and people heralding him as the man that went and got Justin Fields. Because if you look at all the draft picks that he has pissed away and wasted, <laughs> all the salary cap that they have paid, they traded away all the picks for Trubisky. They traded away picks and assets for Nick Foles and then paid Nick Foles a shit ton of money. They oh. just signed Andy Dalton to another contract, pissed away money. All of these things this organization does. And then they finally do one thing right. 
and now mm-hmm. we're gonna now we're gonna crown them heroes? No, no, I can't live in that world. I can love Fields, I can love this team, but I can still think that man is a bumbling idiot, and he's just one of the guys that said everybody's letting this guy fall. I don't think he should fall. We're gonna go get him. Congratulations. Yeah. You're not the biggest moron that day. Every other yeah. day of the year, you're the biggest moron. Okay. So I love the draft. I like what they did. I hate Ryan Pace. I think he's terrible at his job. And if this pans out and this organization wins the Super Bowl, they should still celebrate by throwing his ass into the river. <laughs> hey, by the way, Andy <laughs> Dalton was not awful last year. <laughs> Andy Dalton was not awful. Andy. The hatred for Andy Dalton has gone too far, by it, the way. It certainly oh, has. You have never, you've never had a $100,000 lineup on Monday night football. All Andy fault. Dalton has to do is complete your fault. There's not a day in my life that oh. I have ever bet on Andy Dalton. That's on he you, bro. Any... That's on I you. Know. Why the hell are you betting an on Andy fucking Dalton? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, but I'll never do it again. And I preach it. You would have heard, should have heard the people last year, Andy Dalton starting Monday night football. I said, I promise you the Cowboys are going to get stomped. How could you, you don't know anything about Andy Dalton on primetime. I've watched plenty of oh, yes. Andy Dalton on primetime. Unless it's 10 a.m. on Sunday morning in Cincinnati, he can't do shit. Plain and simple. He is God awful. God awful. He uh, had 64.9% completion percentage last year, 14 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Uh, QBR was not great, uh, 53.8. But, uh, you know, I I don't think it was that bad. I mean, they went 4-5. and Four of the six games that they won last season were under him. You know, yeah, I mean, sixty-four percent completions with the three, the best wide receiver trio in the league. It wasn't even close when you had. I mean, yeah. And he's still. I mean, it's painful to watch him drop back. It just makes my skin crawl when I see that guy under center. Oh God, Andy Dalton. <laughs> and I do agree, right? I don't know who the bigger moron is. Is it Mama Bear who allowed those two idiots to keep their job, or is yeah, it? But uh, she's Ryan like a Pace? ninety-year-old lady, though, so you can't blame yeah. her. I yeah, mean, she doesn't still know what's going on. Yeah, well, hang on now. This is this is like some con <laughs> artist from from some foreign country calling and scamming your grandma. Okay, like yeah, you don't blame grandma for that. You blame those sons of bitches. Yeah, that's They're right, just that's con right, artists conning an old lady. Conning yep. old ladies. Uh, I don't even know how to transition that over to the Minnesota Vikings, <laughs> but we will do our best. Uh, the Vikings went seven and nine last year. Uh, not great under Mike Zimmer. Hey, Chris and I are massive fans of Mike Zimmer. We like what they've done with that organization. Mm-hmm. Um, but Kirk Cousins, eh, you know, ha- hasn't been uh, has not been great the last uh, mm-hmm. however well since he got there. Basically, has not been great. Yeah. Um, they needed yeah. edge help. Since he they started needed... at any position, anytime, anywhere <laughs> against any team that was competent in any way. Yes, there you go. They needed edge help. They needed guard. They needed tackle. They needed safety. And here's what they ended up doing: they went and knocked out the tackle situation early. Uh, tackle Christian Derisaw out of Virginia Tech. I thought that was a fantastic value at number 23. They wait around until the third round, and then they draft quarterback Kellen Mond out of Texas A&M, which I thought was a really good spot. Terrific. They yep. kind of reached a little bit for Chaz Surratt, a linebacker out of North Carolina, but super athletic guy, former quarterback, who switched over to linebacker. He is, he's again, a lightning bolt. He's all over the place. He's not always in the right position, but he can hit. Yeah, but people. under Zimmer's defense, he'll be in the right position. I, I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, they took guard Wyatt Davis out of Ohio State in the third round. I thought that was a great pick. Patrick Jones, the second out of Pittsburgh, uh, edge rusher. That's a really good pick. Uh, Kene Nwangu out of Iowa State, running back in the fourth round. Cornerback Cameron Bynum out of California, uh, another cornerback in the fourth round. Another fourth round pick, edge rusher Janaris Robinson out of Florida State. Wide receiver, Amir Smith-Marset out of Iowa in the fifth round. Tight end, Zach Davidson, um, let's see, in the fifth round. And then edge rusher, Jalen Twyman out of Pitt in the sixth round, who I thought, personally, should have gone much higher. But, um, but yeah, I this is another one. I think they did really, really well with this. They hit basically everything that they needed, and, and they got value guys and guys that I think are going to make the roster and make this team significantly better. I, I completely agree, and I, you know, Minnesota holds a special place in my heart. It is my mom's favorite team. It has been my entire life. She loves the Vikings because she liked purple as a girl. I mean, she'll freely tell you that, and that's what that is. But I like this draft, and I like the tackle they got. One thing I will say, the problem with Minnesota, especially last year, they went with these young corners, Gladney and Danzler, and they're not good. They're they're bad. You, they couldn't stop anybody. I know they brought in, you know, a shell of Patrick Peterson to maybe shore that up, but I would have liked to have seen – 
a little more capital early on on that defensive secondary because that was a massive, massive weakness for this team. However, getting Kellen Mond in the third round is a great thing. It's no secret for me. Even though Jimmy Garoppolo's only played one season for the 49ers, one of the happiest days of my life was when they traded for Garoppolo, and we all knew, thank God, they're not going to give a max contract to Kurt Bleeping Cousins because Kurt Cousins, <laughs> I just talked about Andy Dalton on primetime, 1B who sucks on primetime and sucks in big games against winning teams, that's Kurt Cousins. Kirk Cousins cannot beat winning teams. You are never going to make a deep playoff run with Kirk Cousins as your quarterback. He'll be fine on a Sunday morning at 10 in the Superdome and the Silver Dome and smash up the Lions to Jefferson and Thielen, no problem. But if you put him against a good team or a good defense, that kid absolutely falls apart. He's a mental midget, one of the worst, worst big-time quarterbacks I've ever seen and the, the most over overpaid quarterback maybe ever he's more overpaid than Keith Van Horn was that last year with the Dallas Mavericks when he didn't even play and he made 40 he's more overpaid than Bobby Bonilla is every year on the 4th of July okay getting (laughs) I mean Kirk Cousins is grossly overpaid and I like Kellen Mond he was one of my favorite quarterbacks uh in this draft I actually I know a lot of people are saying he needs to I think he's very productive I think he could play right away and uh, it would not shock me if the Vikings start out slow you see Kellen Mond come in you see a completely different offense uh, overall, like what the Vikings did, love me some uh, Kellen Mond and Derisaw, obviously, an absolute beast in the first round. Great pickup for them. That's going to help Dalvin Cook as well because they need to keep that guy upright. You got as that well. right. Hey, Chris, before you jump in here, Kellen Mond, uh, it, last year it was Justin Herbert that went number six overall, uh, but he played in the NFL completely differently than what his offense was in college. In college, what Kellen Mond was was the leader of an incredibly slow offense that did not utilize uh, big-time plays, right? They, they did not use explosive plays in Jimbo Fisher's offense. Kellen Mond, I think, has all the tools to be able to do that. He is the guy yeah. in this year's draft that I could see looking completely different than what he in did in college. college. 100%. Yeah. yeah. yeah go I, ahead, I totally Chris. agree. I totally agree. I love the Kellen Mond pick. I love the Darisol pick. I think this team got a little better. I think those cornerbacks are going to be better. I think Patrick Peterson's brought in to be a leader in the cornerback room, not necessarily sure. to – but he's far and away from the man that he was when he was the lockdown cover corner, the best cornerback right. in, 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 in NFL history. He, he's not that anymore. He's just not. Um, right. But he can teach those young guys that they have in there and, 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 and really still be productive, just not – a lockdown number one dude. Um, I like this team. I, they did what I thought they would do, which is they went out and got athleticism. Okay. They got sparks guys. They got guys that, that their, their vertical is really good. Their long jump is really good. Like they're explosive type players. And that's what I like about how they drafted and, and, and what they did. Um, I'm with you. I don't believe, look, I don't, I don't think cousins is terrible, but cousins has a ceiling. Cousins is a team that can make you to a wild card game every year of his life. And then lose yep. that wild card game every year of his life. And then yep. he, because he wins just enough to make the playoffs, quote unquote, every year, you're never going to cut him. You're never going to, hey, like, why would you do this? So I, I would rather you be a bag of rocks for three years and me have wasted the pick. So I know I can throw you away and then I could go get something else. But when you make the playoffs every year, every year, every year, or just miss the playoffs every year, every year, every year, you're in the hunt. It's hard to get rid of that guy. Cause you're afraid yeah. of the unknown of not having that guy. And so I, I would rather live boomer bust. I think Kellamon's going to be boomer bust. I think he has a chance to be really good. There's also a world where in three years he doesn't play football anymore. Okay. That's true. But I'm okay with that. That's that's the devil I'm okay with dealing with. Yeah. All right. Um, the other thing you, you said, uh, Kyle, about him being the OS overpaid, you need to go look into the amount of money Sam Bradford took from the NFL. Oh, that, yes. Yes. Sam Bradford's a great, Sam Bradford, great player. Whenever anybody stole a brings lot up of anybody, money. Anybody, no, the yeah. biggest thief in NFL history <laughs> is Samuel Bradford. That's a great point. That's a great point. And no I doubt, do not no, disagree. It, it, the, second, yeah. the second place person is really far down that rung. Yes. You're absolutely right. I don't know how he did that that many years in a row. He's a, too. He's a damn wizard. It was the first, it was the very last <laughs> yeah. year. So, Sorry, it was the last year where they didn't have the rookie wage scale and rookies first round pick, first overall right. picks, whatever, got paid just an obscene amount, like a disgusting, gross amount of money. Yeah. And yeah. and so he got his first contract was ridiculous. His second contract was ridiculous. And then he yep. just got you know, pieces of He stole from contract. everybody. He stole from the Eagles. He stole from the Vikings. He stole from, he stole from everybody. everybody. That's yes, it. he did. Kyle, you brought up yesterday Washington back in the day taking Heath Shuler and Gus Farratt in the same draft. 
Uh, yeah. They did the same thing here with Kirk Cousins and RG3, and Cousins, of course, has made mm-hmm. the most out of it. So, yep. um, But, yeah, obviously making more money from the Vikings right now, doing his thing. We'll, uh, we'll move on to the last team in the uh, NFC North, and that would be the Detroit Lions. Went 5-11 and last year, had a coaching change. Matt Patricia uh, goes back to uh, the Patriots for basically a bag of chips, and they needed help basically everywhere. They, they went and got Jared Goff. They traded away Matt Stafford in the offseason. Uh, got some picks. Got, you know, whatever. Uh, they needed wide receiver, uh, wide receiver, I guess, linebacker, quarterback, uh, cornerback, safety. You know, they just they, they needed dudes. And, and really anything in this situation would have been fine. They were trying to establish a culture under MCDC, Motor City Dan Campbell. And I, <laughs> I will go ahead and tell you, before I read off these names, I love – what they did because I can see the strategy. It's the old school way of going about it, but I like what they did. First round offensive tackle Panay Sewell out of Oregon fits their mentality perfectly. Uh, second round interior defensive lineman Levi Onwazuriki, uh out of Washington. I hope I said that right. That's a tough name. Uh, but he's the one that came in and he was like, I just like hitting people in the face. Like, I, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. He said, which, I just like hitting people in the face. Which There's is no awesome. doubt he was going to be a Detroit Lion oh, when yes. he said that. Uh, third round, they yeah. got Aleem McNeil out of NC State, who plays the exact same way. Uh, third round again, Ifetu Melifon Wu out of Syracuse. Uh, another guy, cornerback, uh, that, that plays, you know, tough, really tough player. Fourth round, wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown. Out of USC, they needed wide receiver help. I think he's going to help with that. I think he fell quite a bit. Linebacker Derek Barnes out of Purdue in the fourth round. And seventh round flyer, they took running back Jamar Jefferson out of Oregon State. And he is a speedster. He's a small dude, but he packs a wallop when he hits you. And, and Chris, we watched him uh, multiple times. You remember us sitting in the sports book watching them against Oregon State. And he was... At, at that point, we thought the best player on the field. I mean, he was yeah. ridiculous. He looked better than Chua Hubbard did. That was the beginning of, like, the 2019 season. He was yes, unbelievable. Uh, I like what they did. I can see the strategy. I, I don't know that what they're doing is the way that the NFL is going now, but I think when everybody else is zigging and you decide to zag, I think that can be beneficial. I like what uh, what Dan Campbell and that bunch did. Yeah, and look, they literally they have a need at every single position on the field. They're not settled at anything outside of maybe uh, the young running back, DeAndre Swift, who still seems to have a little bit of health issues, but that's it. And this team has no wide receivers. I mean, nothing, no, nothing. So I was a little surprised they didn't try to get a playmaker really. Obviously, they didn't bring back Kenny Galladay. They were really strange at the end of last year. They're like, we want to give some of these young receivers help. Then they release Marvin Hall who's a terrific young receiver and a really nice pickup. Uh, I believe he went to Washington. Or did he go to Cleveland? One of those two. And then they sign Mohamed Sanu. I'm like, wait a second. That's not the young guy that we're – so I don't know who the hell Jared Goff's going to throw the football to, but it is no secret that they – Tyra Williams, Brashad Perryman. I I can't believe you're not a Perryman fan. I mean, my goodness. No, I've, God, you got you <laughs> kidding me? Brashad Perriman? I know he had the year with Jameis in Tampa Bay. What yeah. the hell ever. I mean, this is going to be a bad team, and there's no way they were going to be able to fix everything right here. So I do like that they addressed this from the inside out because the team could not stop the run last year. They couldn't block for Matthew. Matthew Stafford was, you know, Stafford's one of the toughest dudes in the league, and he's going to play hurt no matter what. And he was hurt no matter what because that yep. line couldn't stop anyone from smashing him. And, I mean, they just can't stop anyone anywhere. So I, I, I do like the strategy. I like getting Panay Sewell. A lot of people had him going as high as five to Cincinnati, so you get him a couple picks later. Lord knows you got to protect Jared Goff because we're talking about moving on from untrustworthy quarterbacks. The Rams did the right thing in getting rid of Jared Goff. He's an absolute bust, and it's going to be a long year for Lions fans watching him throw hey, to you. You know Tyrell Williams and Brashad Perriman. Oh, TJ you know who TJ Hawkinson are? will not be on my tight end radar for fantasy football so, next year. Typically, uh, you've got an idea of who the, the backup quarterbacks are. Do either of y'all know who the backups are? Or Jared Goff? Is it Chase Daniel? I don't know. Do. Yeah. Chase Daniel's still in uh, Tampa Bay. Oh, okay, Tampa Bay. Okay. No, 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 okay. no. Blaine Gabbard's in Tampa no. Bay, isn't he? I'm about to say Blaine, Blaine Gabbard. Yeah. Blaine Gabbard. Okay, now Chase I have Daniel's no idea where somewhere. Ch- he, he's somewhere. Chicago, maybe? New he's Orleans? Been, he's he made a lot of money. Uh, he's made he a lot of money. He was in New Orleans, but he's not now. It's, it's Tim Boyle, who was the uh, – he just came in from Green Bay, and David Blau, mm-hmm. who came in from Cleveland. He was like 
what? Hey, the Thanksgiving Day Savior two years ago, David Blau was a oh, yeah. DFS monster that day. Came out and threw, threw two <laughs> early touchdowns on Thanksgiving Day. I was very happy with David Blau. Yep. But uh, yep. no, overall, I think I think they did the right thing here. Build inside out. This is going to take a few years to get things right in Detroit. Of course, they still need a quarterback. They need weapons on the offensive side of the ball. But the defense was so awful last year. Uh, I like I like that they went defensive tackle rounds two and three. Get get yourself a. Uh, you know, a staple on that offensive line of Penesol. So overall winning grade here, I would say for Detroit. Uh, I still think they need playmakers though. Chase Daniels is in uh, LA with the Chargers. There you go. Oh, well, there you go. Just, just a little, just collected little checks there. again. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> there you go. I, uh, yeah. Just collecting checks, man. Just, yeah. just collecting, collecting checks. checks. Yeah. I, I like what this team did. I, I'm with you and they, they have a ton of holes. I don't know that it equates to wins this year. Um, there's no. a chance that in three years, what they did this year is going to matter. It's going to be important. And when we look back in three years, we'll say that's where the foundation started. If that team can get to a above 500, you know, level of football, um, they, they still have a lot of holes and they still need a lot of needs, but Gary, you and I talk about this all the time, Kyle, we believe that the way you build a team is from the front seven out on both yep. sides of the line. That's exactly what they're doing. And, and, and I respect that. I appreciate that. Um, if you get that foundation of guys finding receivers, finding running backs, finding DBs is easy. Okay. Finding a quarterback is very hard, but you can run. I mean, we've seen not good quarterbacks make playoffs all the time. And so sure. you can get there with somebody who's well below average as, as long as you built the rest with of the team. Of Baker Mayfield. I mean, we just saw it with Cleveland, right? I'm just kidding. That's okay. No, I, no listen. I told you, I'm I messing not, with you. I'm totally I am not, messing no, you with you. You don't have to apologize. I, I am not a <laughs> look. I don't hate Baker anymore. I did. I did. Um, but but I but I don't. I'm I don't hail him as the savior. Okay. I just right. I just don't. So, right. Chase a little, little nugget while we well, I'm gonna spend thirty seconds on this. Chase Daniels, with the Saints for two uh, three years. With the Chiefs for three years, with the Phillies for a year, with back with the Saints for a year, with Chicago for two years, with Detroit, and now with. Okay, so he uh, was in Detroit. I was like, I knew he was yeah. there sometime. No, he was, he was there time. last year. Okay, yep. okay, good. All I'm right. trying to last look year? up. Uh, he he has made thirty-seven point eight million dollars, and he has thrown a total of two hundred sixty-one passes in the yeah. NFL. Yeah. Doesn't um, he get like three million for per touchdown or like tw- ten million per touchdown pass in the NFL? Something crazy he, like that. Yeah, he's had he's uh, uh, eight 12. touchdown passes. So oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Chase Daniel. That's how you do it, right oh, yes. there. That's how it's done. You, oh, you stay up. Break, in the... Breaking news right now: Panay Sewell just tested positive for COVID. Oh my god! Well, oh, what good are good the chances that it just came across? <laughs> that is good ridiculous. Uh, let's see. I am all right. Thirty-eight point seven or thirty-seven point eight million. Whatever. Um, divided by, let's see, two hundred sixty-one passes. That is, uh, that's about a hundred, almost one hundred fifty thousand dollars a pass. Oh my that's God! <laughs> Even the incomplete ones. Think about that. You yeah. throw in the dirt. You throw a pick. I just got a hundred and fifty grand for that. Oh, that's how you do it. That guy is hustling at life. That's called winning. I you love Chase Daniel now. That. Uh, but yeah. So overall, I think we all like what the Lions are doing. Um, it's yeah. it's different. It's different than what everybody else is doing. Sometimes that can work in your favor. So they still they, they need a lot of help, but I think this was a good draft to uh, to kind of get them headed in the right direction. So props Agreed. to MCDC gnawing some kneecaps off. We are all fans of that. Uh, is there anything else that we need to hit on for today's teams? I it's, think that's it. That is get your it. Brown Super Bowl tickets now. It's going to be the best odds yeah. you're going to get. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, Can let's get out of here. I, uh, Go follow Kyle on YouTube. Uh, you can find his channel, DFS Bachelor. You can find him on Twitter, the same spot, at DFS Bachelor. You can find us at winningcureseverything.com. And, again, sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF, NFL, and MLB. Very simple to do. Uh, you can also find it, I think, at sportsbookreview.com, whatever you want to do. So, go check that stuff out. Gentlemen, I appreciate you all being here today, and we have one more day to go tomorrow. We are hitting the AFC and NFC East, and uh, certainly not the least, I would say, but we had to wait all the way till Thursday to hear Chris's remarks about his Patriots. Um, But I'm I'm excited about it. You know, he gets to talk about... uh, he gets to talk about some Alabama players. So I'm pumped. Oh, yeah. He loves those Alabama players. <laughs> you better believe roll it. Roll Tide roll. Roll, roll Tide. tide. All right. I don't actually What a, what a ridiculously that. dumb saying. <laughs> it is a dumb saying. That would, that would absolutely come it. out of Alabama. 
No doubt. I'm so tired of watching it. People go, why don't you watch the Alabama game on Saturday? I'm like, well, they're playing Northeast McNeese yeah. State, and they're yeah, going to beat them 940 to nothing. Like, yeah. no, I only want to watch them play Clemson. Team. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just beat the living crap out of them with no guilt whatsoever. Just shameful. Oh, wait a minute. Shameful, no, no, no. They'll go play a Power 5 team. Oh, listen, bring in Duke. Bring in Duke. Let's kick yeah, the shit Duke. out of them. We played Duke. <laughs> we played an ACC team. What are you talking about? Poor Gary. We're just I love you guys, but I hate you all the same. So, uh, <laughs> so we'll end with the roll tide, but we'll also tell you take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.